Uh, you wanted to see me? I need your help with something. Okay. All right. So you know me. I'm always thinking of ways to show appreciation to our employees. So I thought, why not have a company-wide cookout? Oh, cool. That sounds fun. So I was thinking, you know, I'm going to be manning the grill, the burgers, the hot dogs. So I was thinking, why not wear a custom-made apron? Is that something you can do for me? Of course I can do that. Then, especially with food involved? Yes. I will get right to it. Thanks, Drew. That's all. That was something else. <laughs> What's going on guys? In today's episode, we're gonna be making a custom apron for our upcoming company cookout. I'm gonna be taking you through the entire process from digitizing our design to embroidering it onto our apron. But before we get into that, remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our latest content. All right, so let's start by looking at the materials we're gonna need for this project. We're gonna need a blank apron, a 13 by 16 Mighty Hoop, standard 7511 embroidery needles, embroidery thread, 2.5 ounce stabilizer in black, and we're gonna be using the TC1501 for this project. With 15 needles, it can embroider up to 15 colors in a single run, perfect for tackling a variety of embroidery projects and multicolored designs. The TC1501 also comes with a sash frame and an optional extended table that can allow you to embroider longer items like tablecloths and decorated sashes. We actually have a past episode of Embroidery Hub where we used the TC1501 and the extended table and sash frame to embroider a decorated Thanksgiving tablecloth. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the card above and the description below. So I'm gonna open up my Chroma Lux digitizing software. Then I will load my artwork into my software using the backdrop tool. And before I start digitizing this, I will quickly resize my design. I've already measured the portion of my apron that I will be embroidering on, so I will set this for about 10 inches tall. The first thing I will do is digitize the flames around my design. So I will come over to my toolbar and select my complex fill tool. And then I will command click my way around the lighter portions of my flames. And as you can see, I'm creating a little overlap between the lighter tips of my flames and the darker orange portion. That will help prevent separation in my threads when I embroider my design. I'll click my realistic view button and change my color at the bottom section of my software. Once I'm done with the tips of my flames, I will select my shape tool and then I will go through and adjust my angle lines and start stop points. Now I will repeat the same steps for the rest of my flames. Don't forget to adjust your angle lines and start and ending points using your shape tool. I'm gonna select all my flames and group them by using the shortcut Command G. This makes it easier to make adjustments to all of them at once. Let's go to our general tab on the upper right side of our software. Now we are gonna to go to connection and choose square from the dropdown. This will make the corners nice and sharp. Let me show you an example. So here we have the chiseled option and then the square option. I'm gonna go here to the general tab and where it says end command, select trim. This will get rid of all the jump stitches. Let's go to our sequence window and click the eye to hide the lighter portion of the flames. Now I will come down here and repeat the same process with the darker portion of my flame. Let's click on our complex tool to get started. Once again, let's use the shape tool to adjust the angle lines and start and ending points. Let's go to connection and change our option to square. Now that I've digitized my flames, 
I'll move on to my stake. So I'll go back to my complex fill tool and command click around the inside of my stake. Then I will change my color to this lovely shade of light brown. And then I'm going to copy and paste my stake. And then I will right click on my copy and select convert to and steel. And as you can see, my software instantly converts my copy into a steel stitch border. This will hide my complex fill stitch from view so I can digitize all these lines inside my stake. I'm gonna set my border to this darker shade of brown. So I'll select my satin tool and then I'm gonna go through and click my way through this line right here around the edge of my stake. I'll set the color to brown as well. And once I'm done, I will right click on my stitch, go to order and go backward to put this stitch behind my main border. And now I'm going to do the same thing for my grill marks. I'm going to select all my grill lines and change the color. Now we're gonna do the lines on the side of the stake. And for the lines on the side of my stake, once I've gone through and drawn my lines, I'm gonna come over to the steel tab and set the width to 0.6. Select the remaining lines and change the width to 0.6 for these as well. Now for the bone, I will select my satin tool and then I will build a ladder around my bone. Then I will come down here and change the color of the bone. Hmm, it's a bit too pink. Let's choose the ivory white instead. Now I'm going to unhide my stake and change the color to a lighter shade of brown than my lines. All right, my stake is officially done. Now for my letters. So I'm gonna go back to my complex fill tool and click around the outline of my K. As I do this, I will bring the edge of the inside of my K to about the middle of my red border. I'm doing this to ensure there's a little bit of overlap between my border and the inside of my letter. And now I will repeat this process with my first E. Then I will copy and paste my first E onto my second E. And now for the P, I will click around the outside border like I did with the other letters. Then I'm going to hide the interior of my text and click create a small complex fill stitch where the hole is. Then I will bring back the interior of my text and select the interior of the P and the new complex fill stitch we just created where the hole is. 
Then I will right click on the shape of the inside of my pea. And then I will come down to where it says shaping and trim. And then I'm gonna click on the inside shape and hit delete. And as you can see, my software created a cutout for my pea. Now I will create my I and T. And I will select my letters and change the color to light yellow. Now we'll come over to the general tab and set my connection to square so I can get a nice clean edge on my letters. Then I will copy and paste my letters and change them to this bright orange. Let's move on to our gradient under my general tab. We have four options for our gradient. We want the linear option, linear increasing, and linear decreasing. For this design, we're gonna keep linear decreasing. Now I will paste my letters a third time. This third layer is going to be my outline. Then I will right click on my copy and hit convert to and steal. And change the color to red. Then I will set my density to 2.0 under my steel tab. Let's get rid of the jump stitches again by going to our commands tab and where it says end command, select trim. All right, we're on the home stretch. Now what I'm going to do is select my satin tool and then go through and manually digitize the word grill. Now let's pay attention to the end of the R. Here we will have to create the end of the R because it doesn't exist in our design. It's important we do this so that we create the overlap effect. We have to do the same with the end of the I. For the dot of the I, we will use our artwork tab to make an ellipsis. Let's rotate the ellipsis to the right to align it with our design. And then we right click Go to Convert To and choose Satin. And here we have the angle lines that would allow us to adjust the direction. I like to delete them and make new ones. This helps me ensure that my lines are in the similar direction to the rest of my word. We will also create the end of the L. And the last thing I will do is select my entire design, come over to my command tab, and set my end command to trim. This will tell my machine to automatically cut my thread every time it moves to a new portion of my design so I don't get all of these jump stitches on my design. I will also change my density to 0.35. Now I'm gonna save my design to my flash drive and let's go hoop my apron. All right, now we're gonna hoop our apron. I've already got my mighty hoop separated. Our two sheets of black stabilizer. I'm gonna layer them just like this. Now we're gonna get our apron. And we're gonna use the notch of the apron, or rather the mighty hoop as our guide. Perfect, and let's take it to our machine. All right, let's go ahead and hoop our apron. Let's make sure to put the strap here in the back. Let's make sure right here we go. 
and it's hooped. And now let's go ahead and let's select our design. Go to file, our design is right here where it says keep it, keep it grill. Okay, so I've already got all my colors selected. We're gonna leave it on automatic, automatic. Our speed's gonna be 800 stitches per minute. And we're gonna make sure, since we're using a mighty hoop, we can do other, or we can also use the F hoop. But we're gonna leave it like that on the F hoop. And we're gonna trace our design. So a trace stitch is just to make sure that my design falls within the parameters of my hoop. And now we'll do our contour trace. And my contour trace is so that I can see where exactly is gonna stitch. All right, we're ready to embroider. Our apron is done. Let's go ahead and unhoop it and let's clean up our backing. Let's get this out the way. All right, and there's our final product. Let's go ahead and take it over to Melanie. I'm sure she's gonna love it. Come in. Hey, Drew. Hey, well, what do you think? Oh, This is amazing. How much money do you think you can make making these? Well, let's so see, the apron's $8, and then the materials are about $2, so we're in for it at about 10. So if we sell it just like that, it'll be $32. So that's about a profit margin of 69%. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm glad you liked it, and let me know if you need anything else, so. I'll be on my way. Actually, I'm gonna need 30 more. Huh? Just kidding. <laughs> all right guys, that's all the time we have for today. The apron came out great. Melanie loved it so much that she gave us some barbecue pork. And it's so good. Mm. And remember, if you're looking for more inspiration for your next embroidery project or want more decorating advice, be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our Embroidery and Custom Apparel Mastery Group. And if you haven't done so already, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments if there are any other topics you'd like to see in a future episode of Embroidery Hub. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.